What up, what up, Head Crush? This is New Gaming Order Podcast for 2016, first of the year. Those of you who are just tuning in on YouTube, uh, make sure you check out our other two segments. And uh, also, check out the Director's Cut. There's always, always bonus content, extra topics between the YouTube stuff. So um, that's something that, uh, you know, is uh, very popular with some of our, like, hardcore audience who want us to, you know, do more iTunes stuff, which I'm working on. So uh, with that being said, the next topic in the shoot, apparently... Rumors have it that Microsoft is considering doing a smaller Xbox One. The news comes from GameSpot.com and uh, the news was released on December 30th. Now, yeah, it's. Uh, I think that Microsoft going with a smaller, cheaper console is good and it's bad in the same way. You know, I am an early adopter. Just like I'm an early adopter of the PS4, I think that I kind of feel kind of jaded in a sense because I got it. I I wasn't a fan of the design. Don't get me wrong. The 360 Slim to me was the best, you know, design that they, you know, and even with the 360 originally, it wasn't that big. It wasn't that big. So with that being said, uh, I don't want to buy another console. You know what I mean? Or if if anything, I'm just gonna have to trade this one in. But hopefully, with a good enough credit, because I will either have to go through GameStop, Best Buy, or you know Target or whatever. But is it too little, too late? Or I mean, you know, there's barely keeping up with competitors as it is. But to release another console um, design. I don't know, but if it's gonna be cheaper with the internals and run quieter, less uh, energy consumption, uh, we'll see. But I wanted to give Goken the floor with that. Is this a good idea now, or you know, should they just stick to their guns and focus on producing the games? I think they should focus on producing the games. Uh, uh, I think the the idea for the console is supposed to be like an Apple TV competitor, basically to give. Uh, I guess non-conventional gamer is an option, right? You don't mm-hmm. have to go buy an app. We'll get this, mm-hmm. right? Because the Xbox One is supposed to be that two-in-one. You shouldn't need to have an Apple TV as an Xbox One. Yeah, yeah. That's not, you know, that's not the case for most people, right? Mm-hmm. I can tell you right now that Apple TV 2, I mean, the, the new Apple TV is <laughs> dope. Like, like it is so dope. What? And, mm-hmm. and and you know, I wouldn't go and buy another. Like they're kind of late to the market for that type of thing. Okay. Because even <laughs> even when I played Rayman for a little bit on that um, on that new Apple TV, mm-hmm. like it looks nice. It looks good. It runs smooth. Mm-hmm. They basically brought me- mobile games to the living room, right? Mm-hmm. The fact that it integrates well with your iPhone already. Microsoft doesn't have a big phone market. Yeah. I mean, it's a tough sell. You know, it, it, I, I think it's something that's not worth it. Yeah. Um, if they're going to try to compete in that arena, you know, just uh, focus on making what you have even better, which I think they can do. Okay. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Um, Shinto Kuma, what are your thoughts? And before you get started, I, n- I noticed going through the article, they said instead of trying to develop maybe another system um, design, which would cost money, just lower the price of the existing one. You know what I mean? And going into the, the next holiday season to see how you know where well they fare out. But your thoughts, Takuma? So let me see if I can understand this. X, oh, well, Microsoft, sorry. Microsoft yeah, it, it's 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 a legend. A, it's, it's it's speculated. It's They're trying to make a smaller system. Mm-hmm. Don't do it, cause y'all back y'all backtracking. I mean, it, it seems like they're trying to do what PlayStation did to. My PlayStation 2, a PlayStation Slim, or something like that. Yeah, how many to... different models were there? Yeah, y'all don't do that, cause don't don't follow in that footstep that PlayStation did. Okay, just cause y'all may or may not be getting beat by PS4 and this or not, don't make the Xbox One or whatever slimmer. Y'all already did it for the 360, that was okay, but mm-hmm. don't do it for the Xbox One, cause it makes no sense. All that time and effort and energy and innovation and ideas that y'all putting in to making something slimmer, make Start creating the next-gen console for the Xbox One. Mm-hmm. Start doing that. 
with right. more innovation of putting more games that's more backwards compatible. Yes, I agree. I agree. All those ideas, all those people, and put it towards other projects that you know your company, your company, and your supporters are going to love. Don't mm-hmm. make the Xbox One stuff. I mean, that's a no. Don't do that. Okay. Okay. That's all I got. All right. Well, on your knees. Uh, what are your thoughts? Okay. <laughs> With that being said, <laughs> Nelson, what are your thoughts? <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, to answer your question from earlier, you can just trade the system back into the Microsoft Store and you'll get the most for your money for the console. If you you mean the online? No, like the physical Microsoft Store. Oh shit, I didn't think about that. I, for- I completely Wait, what? forgot. What? That, that's a thing? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a <laughs> nice thing. thing. Just, just yeah, like I completely that, forgot. Just like how it's a thing that Sony has their own store too, and they kind of do the exact well, same thing. at least, thing. you know, Sony's been selling electronics for many, many years, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I don't know where the hell the nearest Microsoft store would be, for us at least. Well, well I know we know have one in Bridgewater. There's another Willow one. Really? Yeah, Willowbrook. And Gar- Garden State Plaza. Yeah, hey, they got a couple of them. Out here yeah. in Texas, and they got some... some um, Businesses out here too, so I may be working for them before the end of the year. So you're gonna be twerking for them, but definitely you can do that. Now to answer up, the Alex. topics uh, question, I don't see an issue with it because of the fact that um, they're still learning how to condense the technology that they have and put it into a smaller yet compact uh, mm-hmm. model design. I mean, uh, let's take K- Takuma's uh, thing. With the PlayStation 2s and the PlayStation 3s, the reason why that it went to so many different redesigns because the potential of the actual console had a lot of problems. With the fat PS2, it was the easiest to mod. You know, I guess oh yeah, that is the true. People, Linux. The people like us, it was the easiest to mod, but it had a lot of power issues. It overheated okay. too quickly. So they made a smaller one, changed the components out, put different parts or guts, as you would call it. And it ran way better. Gave it bigger nuts. The thing is, it was very hard to mod the slim version of the PS2. And then you needed to start using like uh, USBs. That's when that started getting introduced. And so on. But to to, to, to stop talking about pirating and shit like that. It's a good idea. (laughs) (laughs) It's a good idea for them to come out with a slim version because they may have uh, an updated uh, motherboard or infrastructure to be able to make it run faster, quieter, and not overheat as much. Because the console mm-hmm. does have a, a big heating issue. Mm-hmm. A very, very big one, including with that the fact that it has an external power supply. That you can big. beat somebody or rob a corner store in East Orange with it. What the heck? Like, yeah, yo. If the power supply gets clogged up with any kind of lint or dust, the po- the console will turn off instantly. So that, 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 that's, that, a, that's a fail-safe mechanism to protect it from, you know. It, it, it well, is. It <laughs> I mean, it is, but it's still very bad for your console to go out to that point. Mm-hmm. And um, it would just be a good marketing idea, but as also with it making it smaller, can you guys preserve what you guys have been doing? Because from what I've been reading, you might be taking out some features to make it uh, a rival of like a, a Steam box where mm. it will have certain things and it will only benefit people within a digital mindset. Yeah, they're talking about removing that. the Blu ray drive or, yes. you know, like. Bam. I mean, See, so you, you might not be getting what you inquire uh, with the Slim. Me, honestly, I'm fine with the size of the Xbox One. As long as that shit runs, I don't need mm-hmm. to get another one. Right. Yeah, exactly. I, I agree. And this, my, I, I, you know, wanted to actually respond or, you know, talk to one of our viewers, uh, Brother Natural. Mm. When I had said <laughs> that Sony shouldn't release a more powerful version of the PS4, you're splitting the market. I'm not saying the same thing for Microsoft. You're going to be splitting folks. You're going to be splitting folks like, let's say Microsoft removed the um, Blu-ray drive, right? And you got some systems that can run disk, some systems that's digital only. Now you're going to have two camps within the ecosystem. Don't do it. Don't do it. That's the wrong answer. So just because I said it towards Sony don't mean I won't say it towards uh, Microsoft. So, you know, it, it, unbiased. 
I don't agree with it. Just if if anything, depending on how they do it, because the 360 Slim and the 360, the it was pretty much you use the disc, download hard drives, whatever. With the exception of the hard drives, you have to take it out of the case, put it in an enclosure, then use it on the Slim. But the parts still work with each other. But removing something as significant as the um, DVD tray or Blu-ray tray, that that's like now you're splitting the market, and you don't want that. So yeah, it becomes it becomes a digital um, entertainment console, which is what some people would not prefer. They'd rather still be able to have the ability the to mm -hmm. to have preference to buy either disc or mm -hmm. to have a digital copy. But I would like to comment on something that I've been reading and I'm watching a, a fellow Twitch streamer. He said that the whole pointless bullshit that we're going through, and we did discuss this, mm -hmm. everyone's sitting here battling for the best console, for the best franchises, for the best games and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And you have all these companies that are falling out and having to rely on the corporations to fund for their company because they can't keep afloat no more. Mm -hmm. How about what we did mention previously, why don't you guys just unite all together, be under one big ass umbrella, redesign the whole microsoft sony and nintendo come up with a unique name and just release every single piece of your content on one master system that won't happen just, that won't happen it, i know what you mean is, I, I, I hear you is, you know if what they did this if they did this they would be profiting off of each other no one will be losing out and everyone will be able to survive and keep afloat instead of being what yeah. they call super greedy oh, and then one if you be super greedy and you take out your competition that's all fine and dandy but then people is going to start being like oh now i'm getting stale of your content there's right. nothing new that you can bring to the table oh, then you will God, always yeah. have to one up even higher compared but, to merging to like uh, yeah I, uh, I wish i wish nyc playboy was here because he'd be in agreement with me there already is a system that does this and it's the a PC. master's Yes, and it's a master system at that. But it doesn't have every game, though. It doesn't have every game. Like it doesn't no, have no. like Mario he, he, or. Right? No, he's right in the sense, Alex. Because let's say if you were to strip the licensing, let's say if you was to strip the fact that it wasn't held or bounded by contract towards a company, yeah. all these games are developed on PC from the start. Yeah. If it wasn't for the PC, you wouldn't have these um bootable uh bootable drives and everything to be executed on the console so in mm -hmm. a sense chris is right but you can't strip the licensing or the copyright issues that these companies will hold till death with their product just like with a uh, bloodborne they mm -hmm. want that shit on pc so fucking bad but sony is fighting yet so hard to keep only exclusive rights to their console and from software said they don't mind but they're they're it's getting sony. money yeah but here's the thing that's what i you know what as much as i don't prefer sony but they're they're freaking they go for the juggler while in the public eye they're smiling and all that stuff but they're ruthless they'll be like hey we don't want that game on pc point blank period that's it you know what i mean they're they're fighters and they they go for it you know what i mean so i re i respect that aspect of it but in the same right you get some people that will just not be able to play or choose not to play it, it is what it is but mm -hmm. but doing like a whole master system type thing you have to be careful with that because you know you run the risk of running into monopoly type bullshit and who's to say that they won't conspire and it'll be like oh yeah nintendo sony microsoft get together behind closed doors have a conference meeting like hey you know like the Doctor Evil meme from Austin Powers, like you know, yeah, these th they they're thinking they're getting a, a deal, and you see them all laughing and, and stripping us of, of money. You know what I mean? So, you, competition drives innovation. So it, it does in a sense, but it's like it, it all this pointless bullshit. I mean, it just let, let's put it also to the fact that it's not only just affecting the companies, but mm -hmm. it's affecting and making the consumers very stupid because now with with this being in mind with that everyone is in competition with each other you have the the fanboys now that that's a thing you have these people who are loyalists to their company despite whatever the fuck happens they could be um backstabbing a third world country and they will still support that shit mm -hmm. it, it's just it, it, i find it very stupid that's why i would rather have just like one entity just like just be everything just dish out all the content on one system 
and you guys can just share the wealth together i mean there's nothing wrong with that kind of in a sense pc is already doing that but they just don't have the licensing or the the control to get all these other games because it's still funded by microsoft and in the long run pc it's not like its own thing mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so it's kind of hard to say that in a sense because microsoft does own a a home console version of mm -hmm. what a pc can be capable of okay. same thing with the steam machine still owned by microsoft in a sense mm -hmm. same thing with the alienware machine still owned by microsoft well that, that's yeah. slowly going away right <clears throat> there's a there's a big embrace uh, you know people are really the industry and uh, i'm not gonna say the home people are really embracing the idea of linux okay so like gabe newell and steam as a company mm -hmm. they've been positioning themselves as the people who are keeping everything open source. You can see it with the Steam controller, mm -hmm. you can see it with everything. It's not really locked down. It's like people, like the Steam controller sucks apparently, right? Yes, but yes. It, it, the idea of it is that you, the individual, can make it better. And here's the tools and everything and how to do it. So I think what we'll see is hopefully someday that there'll be an open source standard around gaming, right? And mm -hmm. once that becomes huge, right? I think then we can get get this centralized, um, this kind of centralized everything uh, for a, you know, a PC. And here's the, here's what your mm -hmm. industry, here's what's required for you to be able to play games, right? This is the mm -hmm. spec. You have to have this to be able to play this. And yes, if you have this, you'll be able to play everything else and call it a day, right? And then the developers can get focus on just developing because the standard's out, you know? Okay. Done with, and then be done with the shit. You know? Now, you know, that's but truly that, giving that, power that, to the players. Right. At that that's point. what needs to happen to kind of get that vision that you're going for, uh, uh, Nelson. Mm -hmm. So I think once we start saying, all right, enough with making these consoles or whatever, most people can do most of these things. Let's just break the standards, right? This is what a, a computer should look like to be able to play games, right? You know, you know whatever the specs are. And... Boom, you run with that. Because that's how basically the next works. It comes out, they say, here's your kernel. It is stable as fuck. You know, it's super stable. This is what you have to work with. And we're mm -hmm. going to support it for five to six years. This is what happens in their environment. They support mm -hmm. it for five to six years, even though they're working on better versions of the kernel. Right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. everyone works to make it better. And everyone can make it better. And then there's a review process for, okay, oh, this thing that you put out is actually really good. It's really stable. It's mm -hmm. proven to work. And then in our official next release, we're going to make it available. And mm -hmm. then it brings the spec up. And then you can, you know, the developers can be like, okay, this is what you need to play the game, blah, blah, blah. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I, I, I could see that going if they decide to do that. And Microsoft is embracing open source, heavy. They, they mm -hmm. kind of had no choice but to start embracing open source. So we could see some things getting a lot better for us. Mm -hmm. Right? So. All right. We'll see. So with that, guys, uh, we're going to go into <laughs> director's cut mode or intermission. Make sure you rate, comment, and subscribe. And Goken's going to continue talking some more on this uh, because we kind of strayed a bit. But, you know, that kind of stuff, that's why you watch the director's cut. You get a lot of things because somebody had told me, oh, man, you cut something off right as you're getting good. I'm like, hey, watch the director's cut. You'll get all the unedited stuff. So uh, with that, rate, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next segment. Peace.